Can I join you? I knew something was up. She'd been looking at me funny all day. I could tell she was watching me, staring at me, noting my every movement, and then looking away crisply as soon as I looked in her direction. It was more than just a little disconcerting. I spent the day checking my flies were done up or looking in the mirror to check I'd not got newspaper ink smudged across my face. But as far as I could tell, nothing was wrong. I looked like I did every other day of the year. I tried to ignore her. She was probably just playing some sort of childish game with her mate Lizzie. Those girls were always up to no good. I just hoped this one wouldn't land me in any trouble. I just wanted a quiet life, do the job I was paid for and piss off home. The clock ticked around the 3pm, tea break time. I stood up, put my jacket on and quietly left the open plan office, well aware that people would moan that I never said hello or goodbye. The afternoon cup of tea was my oasis in the barren desert of the long afternoon. A welcome respite from the stuffy office, the tinny radio and the office politics. The canteen was exactly 72 strides away. I started counting down the paces, 71, 70, 69. But I could hear footsteps behind me, light footsteps. She was following me. Tea, child, Beryl said with a grin. I nodded, returning the smile. She was about the only person in the whole place who I could be bothered to raise a smile for. Could you really judge a woman's suitability on the way she makes a cup of tea? If so, I should probably propose to Beryl. No Bob today. I sometimes have my afternoon tea with Bob from HR. On a Monday we'd chat, but by the end of the week we'd just be sitting, enjoying the brew in silence. Knowing by sitting together, other people would leave us alone. We were the lesser of many evils for each other. Meeting, I said, taking the tea and handing over the 75 pence. I could smell a rose scent behind me, meaning the footsteps I'd heard earlier had caught up. I didn't look back. I just took my tea and went to sit in my usual seat, wishing Bob was there. I slurped my tea. I never slurp my tea at home, but I do it in public. It ensures people give you a wide berth. Can I join you? I didn't look up for my steaming mug. I knew Bethan was standing over me. I didn't want her to join me, but that's not really a question you can say no to. Of course, I said with my voice while saying fuck off with my intonation. No, I mean, can I join you? She said, sitting down. I looked at her now. I know who you are. I know what you do. Her voice was above above a whisper, but not loud enough for anyone else to hear. And I want to join. I looked at her, my face not moving a muscle, not giving anything away. Then I looked down at my tea again, blew on it and took a big slurp, hoping my vulgar behaviour would scare the girl away. But she sat there staring at me, waiting for an answer. This was a trap. This had to be a trap. The powers that be obviously had suspicions about me and wanted me to confess to something, anything. This was how it happened, wasn't it? Quirky middle-aged man seduced by pretty young thing. Tries to impress her with tales, with his tales of undercover exploits. And then, bosh, there it is. Enough evidence to send him to the gallows. I stared at her. Assessing her, my eyes steely, my face passive. She was young, pretty, a good actress. There's nothing to join, I said. I stood up and left the canteen, feeling aggrieved that my tea break had been so rudely interrupted. Wait, I heard her say. But I was in no mood to wait.